OK, it's the 10th of December 2010, and this would have been our big Just Winter Fair today. Unfortunately, given all the, the weather conditions, we had to take the, the agonising decision to, to postpone the Winter Fair until February. So in the meantime, I thought I'd just do a quick overview of QR codes for the folks that were coming along to my session. So if you were coming along today, you'd be getting my smallest handout to date, which cunningly disguised as a business card with QR code on it. So what I'm going to do just now is just run through some applications of QR codes and I'll just give you a brief background to them and sort of general overview of where we are with QR codes just now and some specific educational examples. Okay, so quick response codes or QR codes are two-dimensional barcodes like this and they were developed by a company called Denzel Wave in 1994 to track vehicle parts. And one of the advantages they have over uh, 1D barcodes like this is that they can store a lot more information. So Denzel Wave actually own the patent for QR codes, but it's actually free to create and use QR codes, so you don't have to be concerned um, about that. So here's a quick demo of actually how to use QR codes. So all you need to read QR codes and decode them is a mobile phone with some free software to decode the QR codes. You can actually also use a webcam as well, but obviously the advantage is of having a mobile device. So I'll just give you a quick demo of this in action. Okay, so I've got the Waitrose uh, newsletter here and it's got a QR code on it this year. So if I take my mobile phone, fire up the QR code reader, just click on decode here. And I don't have to do anything else, just waft it over, it'll decode it automatically and I can click on the link and in this case it takes me to the Waitrose Christmas app, all without having to type anything in. Okay, so if you were in the presentation just now and you had a QR code reader on your phone, this would be projected up on the screen and you could scan this code in and follow along. This QR code actually goes to this actual presentation on SlideShare. So what I'll do now is just go through some real life examples of QR codes. So there was a, a film recently, Iron Man 2, and they used QR codes in the publicity. So if you saw this poster when you were out and about, all you'd have to do is scan the QR code in and it would take you to a mobile website where you could get show times, photos, trailers, additional information, all without having to remember a URL to go back to and check. Other recent examples include Waitrose, the supermarket chain, They've been using QR codes this year in their, their Christmas advertising campaign. And if you've been watching any of the, the recent Waitrose adverts, at the end it shows you a small QR code. And if you scan that in, it actually takes you to the Waitrose Christmas app. I was in Waterstone recently passing the Moleskine notebooks and noticed they had QR codes on the back. So if I scan this code in here, it actually take me to the product specification of this particular notebook. Also during summer I went to the National Galleries of Scotland in Edinburgh, I went to one of the exhibitions, and on the reverse of a the ticket they had a QR code, so if I scanned this in, it me to the website with more information about the exhibition. In this example this is an anti-bullying site, bullying.co.uk, and it invites young users to create their own posters. So when they create their own posters, it's automatically appended with a QR code and they can share that with their friends and they can download other posters online by pointing their mobile phone at the QR codes. So this is quite a timely example. This is an advent calendar. It's done by a marketing agency. Uh, I think they're based in London and Manchester. But they've put these posters up on the walls around about London and Manchester. And if you scan the codes in, then it'll take to sort of promotional items, freebies, goodies, prizes, etc. They also have a online version, which you can get from advent.lovecreative.com. And if you actually click on, if you actually scan in a code that's not active yet, uh, it pops up with a message saying, trying to sneak a cheeky peek. Um, so that, that's quite a neat way to, to do an advent calendar. This would be great educationally. I could imagine this being used for resources and maybe in a learning resources centre. Okay, so we're moving on to more educational examples here. This was recently done by media students at Edinburgh's Telford College. They had a, an art show, their annual art show, 
and they dotted these posters around the college and they have a QR code and if you scan the QR code it goes to a Facebook invitation page and it gives you more details about the art show. This example is from the University of Exeter and they're doing a pilot just now and they have QR codes dotted around the campus and when you see a, a QR code just scan it in and it'll actually take you to the Google map of your exact position and you can also get the street view. So you could use QR codes for assessment, so in something like a multiple choice, you could have the various options as QR codes, and when the student scans these in, it takes you to the appropriate website, giving you more information about your response. We've seen examples previously of using QR codes on posters, so this is an educational example. This is actually from Dundee College Library. So by scanning the QR code in, you can go to the, the mobile site and you can do things like renew your books, uh, go into your Athens account. So it's an absolutely fantastic way of using QR codes. I don't know how many times in the past I've walked past a poster and thought, oh, that's a good idea, I'll check that URL later on. I never go back to it and always forget about it. If it's a QR code, I could just scan it in. I don't even need to go to the website there and then because it saves it in my history so I can just go back any any time I want. And talking of libraries and learning resources centres, you could also link QR codes to your electronic books. Something like if you had core textbooks which are always out on loan, you could put these above the shelf. Uh, so if, if they're not available on the shelf, click on the QR code and be taken to the electronic book. You could also do the same for electronic journals. You could also have QR codes on your library catalogue. This is something the University of Bath have done. So this actually just goes to a plain text file of the catalogue record, which saves you having to write it down. Bath have also done something interesting with their Moodle site. If you print a document on Moodle, it actually displays a QR code, so you can scan, scan it in and go back to the electronic version. You could actually also link the QR codes to multimedia guides and how-tos, so you can play uh, videos. In this example from the University of Technology in Sydney, they're, they've got a video on how to use their Express catalogue system. So scan the QR code in on your phone and it'll display a short 20 minute clip of how to actually use the catalogue on YouTube. Similarly, if you're in a workshop environment where traditionally you haven't got access to, to computers, you could actually place QR codes on items of equipment. So I've taken this picture from Flickr as a, an art studio example, and I've placed various QR codes on maybe how to use uh, different types of brushes, etc. Also thinking personally from my own background as an electronics engineer, if I was in a workshop, I could label things like uh, multimeters on and how to use them and how to use various pieces of electronic equipment. Just a couple of final quick examples. I could actually link QR codes to supplemental material. So this could be a book or it could be a handout. So in this case, it's a book and it's linking to the author speaking about the book. And finally, you can have scavenger hunts or treasure hunts. Uh, this is taken off quite widely in the UK, I've noticed uh, from doing Google searches, particularly this year, uh, a lot of uh, learning resources centres are actually doing this at induction time, but it could be used in a whole range of situations. So if you want to create your own QR codes, there are a number of generators out there, and I'll just point out a couple at the moment. One's called Kiwa or Kaiwa, and when you're creating uh, QR codes, there are a number of things you can do. In this generator, you can encode URLs or web addresses. You can add just plain text, phone numbers, SMS. And it's very simple to do. Just fill in the information and click Generate, and it'll give you the QR code here. It also provides a bit of code where you can copy and paste that into your blog and have that displayed blog or website. Probably a word of caution or advice is try not cram in too much information in a QR code, particularly if you're doing text, you can carry it away and you can put quite a lot of text in there, but it makes the QR code rather complicated. And if you've got a high-end phone, that's no problem, it will decode it fine. You've got a, a nice, fast autofocus camera, no problem for that. But if you've got a lower-end camera, it will struggle with a lot of information. So try and keep your QR codes as simple as possible. And if you're encoding a URL, 
I'd always recommend that you put it through some sort of shortening service like Bitly, just to make it as least complicated as possible. Another similar service is Deliver, and this has a built-in shortening service so you can shorten your URLs and make your QR codes as simple as possible. On this site as well, it's also got download the QR code reader for your phone or send a link. If I go to that page on my mobile phone, so if I type this address, percentmobile.com slash getqr on my mobile phone, it will recommend two or three QR code readers that will work on my phone. QR code readers are available on all major platforms and it will run on iOS for iPhone, Android, Blackberry, Symbian, Nokia. Uh, also, if you've got a Java-enabled phone, I've got an old um, five-year-old phone, a Sony Ericsson K800i. Uh, so it's, it's Java and it, it works on that as well. So I've got a reader available for that. And if you're thinking about using QR codes in your institution, there's some things to be aware of. There was a case study done last year through the Molnet project about the use of QR codes at induction time with students. And some issues were raised in terms of equipment. Some, some students didn't have the correct equipment. Awareness, uh, they didn't know what QR codes were. And possible network charges. Some of these can be addressed uh, in terms of awareness, maybe do this at induction time, make students aware of how to use it. If your institution is Wi-Fi enabled and the phone has a Wi-Fi connection, you can hook up there uh, without incurring any network charges. Although QR codes won't be universally accessible to everyone, it shouldn't deter you from, from doing it uh, for the bulk of your users. The smartphone market is increasing rapidly and I've got some stats here. Smartphone market drives 600% growth in mobile web usage. So the prices of uh, smartphones are plummeting and the facilities that I've got are growing day by day. Another stats here, we've got Ofcom reports show there were 121 mobile phones for every 100 people in the UK. So a lot of people out there have mobile phones that will read uh, QR codes. To finish off, I have some resources here. I've got the excellent Seven Things You Should Know About series, and this one's on QR codes. Uh, this is from EdgeCodes, so well worth a look. And some information from the University of Bath on QR codes. Uh, they were part of a just funded project, so they have lots of information, well worth a look. Uh, so that's it. Uh, that was a quick look at QR codes, uh, looking at some general examples, some educational examples, how to create your QR codes, and some resources. So we're really sorry that the winter fair was postponed due to the, the current weather conditions. If you have any questions or queries of, about QR codes, please don't hesitate to get in touch.